Today is our topic about the coagulation cascade. Coagulation cascade, it is a process in which coagulation occurs step by step. If we come first of all here into the intrinsic pathway. Intrinsic pathway, the pathway which happen within the blood vessels. Within blood vessel. Within blood vessels. This mechanism active when the injury in the sub in the vessels happen then this mechanism active for example sub endothelial collagen sub endothelial collagen active the factor number 12 all the clotting clotting factor are produced into are produced in the liver then they active if we come to the intrinsic pathway first of all i have told you that the intrinsic pathway which occur within the blood vessels Subendothelial collagen active to the factor number 12. Factor number 12. Factor number 12 comes in contact with factor number 12 when comes in contact with the subendothelial collagen, then it's active to factor number 12A comes in contact to the factor number 11. Factor number 11, then it's active the factor number. 11 factor number 11 comes in contact with the factor number 9 and active the factor number 9 factor number 9 comes in contact with the factor number 8 and then active it and factor 8 active the factor number 10 this is intrinsic pathway intrinsic pathway again i want to tell you about that the it is pathway which occur within the blood vessels subendothelial collagen active the factor number 12 and factor number 12 active the factor number 11 11 active the factor number 9 then 9 active the factor number 8 then the factor 8 active the factor number 10 intrinsic pathway if there is deficiency of any factors occur for example if there's deficiency of factor 9 or the factor 10 then the disorder of the bleeding can cause because these mechanism will not happen and then we do a test which name is ptt ptt the name of this test is the partial thromboplastin time the level or the value of the ptt will be high ptt will be high when for example we do a test for the ptt when the value of the ptt will be high then always remember one thing in your mind then the one of these all factor have a missing one or if one is not missing then one of all of these factor have a any problem so that the value of a ptt is high and if we come to the extrinsic pathway extrinsic pathway first of all there's tissue thromboplastin which name is a tissue thromboplastin tissue thromboplastin is a factor number third it comes in contact with the factor number seven factor seven and activate the factor seven active the factor number ten factor seven active the factor ten extrinsic pathway it is a pathway which occur outside the blood vessel it's occur outside the blood vessels for example if there's a path problem into the factor 3 or the factor 7 then the extrinsic pathway have a problem or the bleeding disorders and then come to the factor number 10 and this for the extrinsic pathway we also do a test which name is a pt pt mean prothrombin p T test PT is a prothrombin test if the value of the PT is high in any test then it mean that there is a problem in the factor number 3 or the factor 7 for the remember of this fa extrinsic factor you have to know that if you add 3 to 7 it means it is a 10 3 to 7 when you add it means the 10 and the 3 first active then active the 7 then it's active the factor number 10 this is both mechanism intrinsic mechanism or extrinsic mechanism these both mechanism active the 
common pathway mechanism there is the x start from the common pathway x active the factor number 5 5 then factor 5 active the factor 2 from being this active the factor number 1 which is the fibrin and fibrin there's active the factor number 13 fibrin stabilizing factor this active and attach with it and then it's caused to the film clot or the film thrombus this all the mechanism which is known as the intrinsic pathway or the extrinsic pathway and one of these things intrinsic pathway have the more bleeding time or clotting time have the more clotting time we know that because why because these are the main more than the extrinsic pathway clotting factors have these have the 12 11 9 8 but there's only the two so intrinsic pathway bleeding time will be high and the extrinsic pathway bleeding time and also the floating time will be low so if we come to the quick review there is a coagulation cascade coagulation cascade it is a mechanism of the coagulation step by step there's a mechanism intrinsic pathway and the extrinsic pathway if there is a problem in the sub endothelial collagen that is active to the factor number 12 factor 12 will active the factor number 9 and factor 9 will active the factor number 8 factor 8 active the factor number 10 this intrinsic pathway if have any problem or the factor deficiency then the ptt value will be high we do a test of the ptt and if there is a ex extrinsic pathway here and there is a 3 active first of all then active the 7 7 and 3 if we add this is equal to 10 and these both active the factor number 10 and if have a problem in the extrinsic pathway then we will do a test is a pt which mean is a prothrombin test if the value of the pt will be high then it means that there is a problem of the factor number 3 and the factor number 7 and these both mechanism then cause to the common pathway common pathway active to the factor number 5 which is a laden factors factor number 2 and the factor 1 and the fibrin stabilizing factor and make the film clot which is the main thrombus <laughs>